Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our Sustaining Your Farm to School program webinar. I'm Bob Gorman. I'm the Farm to School regional lead out in the Mountain Plains region. I'm joined today by Sarah Heisner, who's the Food Education and Youth Outreach Manager for the Burlington Food School Food Project. And I'm also joined by Doug Davis, who's the Director of Food Service for the Bur Burlington School Food Project. Welcome, guys. Thank you. We're happy to be here. Thanks, Bob. All right, before I turn it over to him, I've just got a couple of housekeeping notes. To make a comment or question, use the chat function. This webinar will be recorded. Both a PDF of the slides and a link to the recording will be available on our Farm to School website in approximately two weeks. After the webinar is completed, we will have an evaluation that will pop up after you X out of the presentation. Please take a couple minutes and fill it out. Let us know how we're doing. And then again, as always, we're offering SNA continuing education units for um, you know, SNA and then also professional standards. Um, those will be emailed to you after the webinar as well. If you are listening to a recording of this webinar and would like an SNA CEU, please shoot us an email at farm to school at fns.usda.gov. And that's all I have. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Sarah and Doug. Welcome. Hi, thanks so much, Bob. This is Sarah. Welcome, everyone. Um, we are coming to you live from the beautiful shores of Burlington, Vermont, which is situated on Lake Champlain. Um, we are a population of 42,000 people. Um, and we have a really rich food culture here. Uh, many of you may know we have access to lots of local farmers within our city limits, which really helps us with our, our local food initiative. We also have a really strong local food scene in our restaurant world um, and our grocery world. In general, we also just got rated number two uh, town, town in the U.S. for urban gardens. So that also is a, an awesome feather in our cap, and we're very excited about that. Um, yeah, so that's, that's who we are, and um, we welcome you with this beautiful photo. Um, let me, I'd like to, this is Doug Davis. I really appreciate you all joining us. Uh, Burlington is a city of about 42,000, um, the proud home of Senator Bernie Sanders. And I've been fortunate to work in the Burlington School District for 18 years. We began our farm to school work in 2003 as part of a Growing Farms, Growing Minds grant. And that is when we began creating a lot of our ongoing partnerships with many of our community members, partners, and businesses. The um, city itself has 10 fully operating kitchens and um, out of about 10 um, buildings that we service. The city demographic has 55% free and reduced students. We take advantage of CEP in several of our schools and um, um, five elementary schools actually, and including the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable uh, grant and program. The Fresh Fruit and Vegetable program is probably our most successful in terms of connecting directly with our farmers, um, as it does allow us for a little bit more money, and it also allows us for communicating with our farmers and having a better understanding of our actual need. We're also working really hard to make sure that our trained staff within our kitchens um, have maybe a higher level of cooking experience and culinary skill than what may be um, considered typical in child nutrition programs. All of our Kitchens have um, either a Culinary Institute of America nor, uh, or New England Culinary Institute graduate within our school. And what we try to do is build a system in which our, um, our school leaders can build up and teach our school food professionals so that when they are given new food to work with, um, the, it is not something that is foreign to them. It's something that they're really looking forward to using. The picture on your screen to your left, um, we included that picture because what it, it shows 
a way that we are able to utilize both commodity product. There's some um, commodity strawberries in there. There's some commodity fruit in there as well. Um, also, there is local fruit in there. The um, melons, much of the melons that are cut in there are local, and that would probably be September or October here in Vermont as that is our biggest um, harvest time of year. Um, on your right, you'll see Sarah does a lot of our delivery and pickup from our farms, and then the products come in and get processed within our schools. From a personal standpoint, um, all of this to me has been really important and really vital. Um, for me, the work that we all do every day, and I thank anyone who works in child nutrition who's on this webinar right now, um, is all about food access and making sure that children receive the necessary nutrition every day to get through. Um, what we've been able to do is tie those things together, food access and farm fresh food, to create community partnerships. And I think one of the things that Burlington does really well and one of the things that perhaps maybe sets us apart a little bit is our ability to maintain those community partnerships. And throughout our um, show, slideshow today, we're going to be sharing some of the strategies we use to make that happen. Lovely. And um, obviously a huge component of the Burlington School Food Project uh, not only is uh, providing delicious and nutritious meals for our students, but also providing garden education, food education. Um, and it's definitely one of those places, you know, we've been doing it since 2003, that we have had uh, a lot of experience. We've, 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 we've tried probably everything. Um, some things have really uh, been not, knocked it out of the ballpark and done really well, and some things have, uh, you know, s sputtered to a halt. <laughs> so it's a big learning process, and we've definitely learned over the years. Um, but being that this webinar is based on creating sustainable programs and really um, keeping the appeal high, uh, we've, we've been, this garden in particular, this is the Hunt Garden. It's part of our Hunt Middle School. Uh, it's been around for, I would say, about six or seven years. It's a half acre plot. It is really immersed in our school. It, every year we have about 700 people from the community and the school that come in for a harvest dinner. Uh, all the classes at some point in the fall semester come out and do work in the garden. They tie it into, into like Spanish class, into math class, into science class. We have students coming out and sketching drawings of plants and things like that. And then in the fall when we do the harvest dinner, they mount everything on the walls. You know, it's, it, it really shows how deeply rooted this garden is in the actual school. So it's a really fantastic model. That one, um, we have really uh, found that, that community support and stuff that has come to the garden has really, um, it's, it's, it's changed throughout the year. You know, we started the first, our first couple of years with, with Hunt Middle School Garden uh, were ones where we were financially supplied by area businesses. You know, Gardner Supply Company is housed here in Burlington. Um, and it's been a wonderful fit and did a lot of, uh, wrote us a lot of grants throughout the seasons for us to buy starts, to buy soil, and things like that. Um, they have changed their model since in their, in their give, model of giving. So after that is sort of more or less dried up, we've moved on to other avenues, um, asking PTO members for funding, um, obviously using the Harvest Dinner as you know, kind of showing the importance of the gardens. Uh, one of the big things that sets our gardens apart from maybe some others are the fact, is the fact that we are a production garden. Like we put a lot of time and energy into our gardens. Um, and not only are they educational, but they provide a ton of produce. We do thousands of pounds of vegetables come out of our school gardens in the summer, and they go both into our kitchens, they go onto our food truck, which we'll talk about in a little bit, and then they also go home with a lot of our students, which has been very impactful. Um, but Hunt is a great example of us just really reaching out to our community and getting a lot of community support, which is really important in keeping uh, your program sustainable is, you know, as much as it can get drove into the community, the better. Uh, then we also have our big gardens at our high school. These ones have been in for about three years. This has really been a build it and they will come model. Uh, we've spent a lot of time out in front of the school digging, planting, mowing, things like that, really having a presence uh, so that eventually teachers started coming out and saying, what are you guys doing? What's going on out here? Um, and through that, 
we got teacher involvement, we got student involvement, we actually were able to reclaim a greenhouse, which um, many of you who are in schools, especially high schools, you might have one of those old green, glass greenhouses that maybe are being used to store items or maybe being used as a greenhouse. Ours was being used as storage facility and we reclaimed it and it's been really productive. It actually supplies the starts for the entire district. Um, so it's been that this, this model in particular, whereas the Hunt Garden was um, something that slowly started with the school, we kind of went into Burlington High School and just made a presence there, made our presence known, and eventually got um, a lot of involvement um, and activity. Just a quick aside, the reason why we focus pretty wholeheartedly on middle and high school is because we found that with all of the schools in our district, Elementary schools tend to have very strong PTOs, very strong parent involvement in general, and usually we've found at every one of our schools there's at least one elementary school teacher that is a champion of the gardens. So with that being said, we have decided to really hone our attention on middle school and high school, uh, and high school in particular because high school is the melting pot for our entire district, and the more that we can establish growing and food education there, the better, um, and the more I feel like we have an impact on students that are going off to college or making the next step choices. Um, so as I said before, Gardner Supply was one of our big funders. I would suggest looking, <laughs> some of the best partnerships you're going to find in your town are going to be local hardware stores, mom and pop, greenhouses, um, I would say if there's a co-op or a health food store, that's a really solid place to check as well. Places where you really can align your mission. Um, and one of the other things I would definitely advise is lots of glossy photos. As you can tell in our PowerPoint, we are, are photo heavy, and it's really what we found that a lot of our community partners like. They like the picture of the smiling children. They like the carrots. They like them in the garden because it's a, you know, it's a, it's, it's an I scratch your back, you scratch my back kind of situation. You know, they're providing funding for us and allowing us to open doors for more creative programming. And in return, the more we can give them these fabulous photos and show them the impact through these glossy, mm -hmm. glossy pictures, it really tells our story. And they can also then in turn show their customers, which really helps them in, in their standing. Uh, I think I'll just take a moment and add that um, all of our gardens that we are speaking about today are on school property. And we work really closely trying to get our teachers to be involved with it um, in terms of bringing classes out or the community to have gatherings on the school grounds to make that work. The picture that you're seeing here is another um, angle of the, the Hunt Garden. The, the slides before at the high school are part of the, um, the high school itself. And also um, what it allows us to do is get um, teachers to participate in the gardens at the, at the school level. At Hunt, for example, the, we're, we're building up towards our spring garden opening and, and uh, celebration. The PE teachers will spend the day with kids physically hauling soil and turning the garden over as part of um, their PE uh, regiment for the, for the week. So you guys will notice that there are um, like I have these logos on each one of our photos here. This is to kind of this is to show you who kind of got us started. Uh, this in particular particular is Toolbox for Education by Lowe's, and I don't know if any of you have applied for this grant, but this grant is a fantastic grant. It is I think it caps out at five thousand dollars. We've actually within our district I believe had um, three of these grants um, for various schools. Obviously, a school can't be given this grant twice. But it's been so wonderful and a really great way just to get things started and kicked off. Because in all honesty, with school gardens and, and, and orchards and things like that, it's the initial work that's, that's the investment, and then it really should be easy to sustain. I mean, easy as in money, labor maybe not so easy. <laughs> it takes a lot of weeding and watering. But the C.P. Smith Orchard was a great investment by Lowe's Toolbox for, Toolbox for Education. We have 10 blueberry plants. We have 10 different fruit trees. We have like 300 raspberries. Uh, and we've, we're doing a community work day on Saturday where they're going to come out and weed and get everything ready for the summer season. Um, so that has been a really 
great opportunity, great initial breaking ground uh, program builder. Once again, we have uh, another logo. We have the Burlington Kids, which has been a really fantastic funding stream for us. It's actually Burlington's after school program, which for many people, they, that kind of goes under the radar. But there's quite a bit of funding in after school programs for activities, for clubs, for things like that. And a lot of these coordinators of these after school programs are really looking for activities. That being said, we found that our Burlington High School coordinator was looking for more you know, varied programming, and we developed an after-school program that's in its third year called the Food Fighters. Um, and it's been really helpful, number one, in keeping us sustainable at the high school, keeping us there every fall and spring semester. Kids come back. They, they, they know to look for Food Fighters after-school program. Um, it also, it also has helped us to, within the budget and the, and the, the pitch that we give the after-school coordinator, every semester we also write in supplies. So there's a budget for supplies that can also piggyback on the supplies that we need in order to keep our school gardens going. So it's been a really great way to kind of, number one, get kids involved, number two, to really keep the little bits of money that we need for seeds and soil and stuff like that to keep that coming through. Um, City Market uh, is our local food co-op, and I'll share that they were a recipient in the original grant in 2003, and they remain our longest standing partner. Um, Sarah had mentioned a work day at the Orchard this weekend. Um, I don't know if City Market is specifically doing it or not, but there are several um, um, industry partners within our community that do work that, that do do the garden work with us. City Market is one of them. Green Mountain Coffee Roasters is another. Um, Dealer.com is one that Sarah will get into shortly. Um, but what City Market has done over the last 15 years for us is maintain a funding stream. For example, City Market funds Sarah's health insurance, which is something that really has allowed me to keep someone of Sarah's abilities employed. I mean, we're, we're not able to fully afford um, her full level of benefits. That's something that's very helpful. They also do something called Rally for Change. So for the month of May, for example, um, all, all customers are going to be asked if they want to round up their bill to the nearest dollar. That money will come to us. And it is several thousand dollars by the end of the, um, by the, end of the month. Um, they also have worked really closely with us in terms of helping us share marketing materials, helping do um, human resource training and customer service training for our staff. Uh, the, I believe that every community would have something like that, and it would be worth your while to try to seek that out. Yeah, I think there's definitely options uh, within communities to kind of develop something like, you know, March of Dimes does stuff at many, um, even corporate locations around the country, but to be able to have a roundup situation is kind of fantastic. It really, it really helps. Um, so overarchingly, sustainable and um, keeping people into uh, farm to school, we've kind of operated on flash. Flash, keeping things flashy, keeping things exciting. You know, we live in a society now where things, um, people like, they like things that are in, they like things that are bright, that are in your face, more or less. Um, and both that and then keeping our presence really solid in the community. Uh, this next project, Fork in the Road, is our food truck. It's a youth-run food truck, and it, has, it operates throughout the summer. It pays students. We pay students uh, minimum wage, plus they get tips. They learn culinary uh, skills, hospitality skills. They get to meet area restaurant owners, owners area farmers, area business leaders. Uh, and this is going to be our third season, and it's been so impactful. It has done such an awesome job of getting us out of our school and into the community and with it becomes awareness and funding and education for the community. Um, it's highly impactful and it's definitely flashy. <laughs> uh, one of the things that you may have noticed by the photos um, is that Burlington is a refugee resettlement city and though anyone can apply and work for the food truck, as it has been the last couple of years, we have had almost exclusively new Americans apply for and be uh, given employment on the truck. 
And what it has done is really not just boosted all the things Sarah said in terms of our visibility within the community, but acted as an incredible um, lift for these kids in terms of their ability to communicate, their ability to practice English, to see things outside of just the school day and um, what's happening in their own communities or their own households. They're actually looked upon as um, leaders in the Burlington School Food Project, um, not just at the food truck at events, but at school when they are wearing their t-shirt or their hat or talking about the work that they've done. I think more importantly too, it gives them a sense of, um, of belonging and a, uh, a better boost on education. One of the things that Sarah failed to mention um, is the, the extent to which we train these kids, not just to work on the truck from a food standpoint, but also to expose them to things that perhaps they didn't have the ability or um, the, the likelihood to be exposed to. For example, the local credit union comes in when the kids, before the kids get their first paycheck, teach the kids how to open up a bank account, teach the kids how to balance that account, um, and just give them an, an understanding of, of, of money. Also, we bring people in from the community to explain to the kids other services that are available to them that maybe they weren't aware of things that are very valuable to kids, especially growing up um, you know, here in 2016. I think that the, the, the kids have gained more from the food truck probably than the food, than, than the food service has itself. The, school, the schools get truck visits every fall, or that's the plan at least, for the schools to get visits every fall. The, kids, the um, employees will make yogurt smoothies or something along that line so that the younger kids can have an opportunity to see the, the truck in action, and also that the kids themselves get to go back to their sending elementary schools and really kind of show off for their, for their community and neighbors. So for us, we have gone from school gardens, which we still do, and we still um, work a lot with teachers, and we work um, with community members and, and host food education in our gardens. Um, but we've kind of taken it to the next level understanding that farm to school um, also in you know, it, farm to school needs to have a, a, a even broader impact and using food as an umbrella for education, you know, personal education, for us the biggest thing that we want our students to leave with in the summer is um, confidence, ability to understand like when you when you have responsibilities that you know you need to fulfill your obligations and responsibilities and then also being able to be self advocates which sometimes is lost in high school uh, it's just it's interesting that we find ourselves in this place um, but it's also very amazing that that food can open these sort of doors for people um, we wouldn't have access to these sort of flashy fabulous things if it wasn't for local companies, and dealer.com has given us our wheels. It, it, it loved our idea of, of youth training, um, tying in food access, tying in food education, um, job training, all that sort of stuff. That was awesome for them. But even on top of that was, it's a food truck, and food trucks are very hip and very in. So let's make this happen. This sounds great. Uh, so it's just another example of how we were able to take something somewhat flashy and get community buy-in. And in, in return, we were able throughout the, throughout the steps of this pro process to develop a program that is going to be sustainable. You know, we are able to sustain it through the money that we make, through even more restaurant interest. We have lots of restaurants now that are hopping on board to both educate our youth and then also do fundraisers for our program. So um, it's been a really great synergizer, if you will, of, of people in the community. Uh, um, and yeah, and, I, and it's also just really fun to do. <laughs> it, it is super fun. And I think that what it shows and what we're trying to show is that Farm to School itself has really grown, matured, and changed. The, the, the fact that even in 2003 when we started, we were all about getting kids to try cherry tomatoes, getting kids to try local carrots, local broccoli. Um, that's all fine and good, but for us, farm to school, like education, is sequential. And we need to make sure that when kids leave here, they have a better understanding of food system and a better understanding of their role 
in what it means to be a consumer in their community. So over time, what we've really been able to do is get kids excited about food at a time and at an age where they can then do something about it. And we've been able to show our community that the Burlington School Food Project will act as a partner for them, not just to spread their mission, but also to create a new generation of consumers. So in moving forward, um, post all of this, we just received the USDA grant, Farm to School grant this year, our third try. Um, we, we are now working with a marketing firm because one of the big things we also found was not only being flashy, but also you know, we brand ourselves. We brand Fork in the Road, Food Fighters is a big name, and then Burlington School Food Project itself has a logo and has a mission statement. So um, in working with a marketing company, it's allowing us to really try to find out how we fit into the community more and really make ourselves uh, an, a, an organization that is, is elevated by the community. So that's it from us. We would love to hear questions from everyone. <laughs> and as, you, as always, we really appreciate the opportunity to share what's working in Burlington and always welcome the opportunity to visit other schools and welcome people to come visit us here. Great. Thanks. So I'm, we're Thank noticing... Much, everyone. Great. We do have a couple questions coming through. Um, first one comes from Amy. Have you faced challenges with the cultural differences? And then if so, how have, these, how have you worked through some of these issues? So if we're talking about um, our programming in general, um, I guess the cultural differences actually really lie with um, cuisine. Um, we work with mostly uh, a lot of Hindu and a lot of Muslim students. So um, in navigating that, the first year that we actually did the food truck, um, I was doing hot dogs that none of our kids could eat because they both had pe beef and pork. And so I actually had to get um, a local community member to come in to talk about um, what's haram, which is like unholy food um, in, in Muslim culture, and like what these students could do in order to uh, work around some of, some of this stuff. Really, it was, it was, it's all about leaning on the community uh, to make sure that, that all religious um, needs are met. So really, it really, when it comes down to food, we, we definitely have an understanding of it. Within our school district also, we don't serve pork. We label everything that's beef. We understand that there's major um, uh, relig like restrictions when it comes to diet. Great. Thank you. And if anybody else has any questions, feel free to type them in. We've got time for maybe one or maybe two more. So well, I'm seeing that there's one question about funds. Um, all the, the food that's purchased through our program, whether it's Fork in the Road, whether it's Farm to School, whether it's you know, school meals, um, are purchased out of both federal and local funds, meaning money produced by the food truck. The food truck um, is something different. As, as my passion and, and mission are around food access for kids all of the time. You know, the thought process that I went into the food truck with was that this, meal, this truck would deliver summer meals. This truck would deliver um, meals to, to low-income areas of our community. Um, we are able to do a decent job, I think, accessing those children or having those children access those meals in the summertime. We wanted to use this truck as a way to better educate the community about what we do and better educate our kids around the service and preparation of food. But the funding for it is just um, is through our regular um, a regular uh, budget, whether it be federal or local. Well, and the, and the food truck also is um, uh, Dealer.com, who writes us a grant every year. We do an ask that covers um, our food truck manager salary, and then also it helps us with paying our students. Then we also make money off the food truck, I and mean, we don't make money, but the money actually covers the cost of expenses uh, and we do buy we do focus on using local uh, farmer farmer grown and farmer created products so that is one of the things as well and I think that the partnership with dealer and knowing that it was coming um, was terrific because it allowed us to um, design and build the food trailer ourselves and we did that with the knowledge and help of the local um, health departments 
so that we built the thing. It is a mobile kitchen, so it can be used not just as a food truck, but for any any food preparation activity. So um, we do provide food at festivals, for private catering, at farmers markets, um, wherever food trucks gather, or um, being a regular for hire um, component of a, a catering company. Um, this kitchen, this kitchen is um, registered and um, able to serve food um, at any of these events. Oh, great. Thank you, Doug. Got another question coming in from Dorothy. Um, she's wondering about creating partnerships with local businesses. And it sounds like in her area, Farm to School hasn't really caught on as much. Um, do you have any suggestions for those areas where you know, there, there may not be a, a huge farm to school push so far? And how, how can these newcomers really um, start getting some of their farm to school programming funded through some of these local companies? Mm. Well, I would definitely go first with if you can get that you know, $4,000, $5,000 grant so you can get the infrastructure put in, so you can actually show people that you mean business. Um, but I would, I would definitely tackle, like I said before, I think I would go to family-owned businesses are sometimes the best. Um, hosting community dinners, if you can partner with food service, hosting community dinners or like farm dinners where you actually have picnic tables out near your school garden and you have like a farm dinner, it just gets people buy-in, inviting business owners to come out and see this. It's just, you, you, you just got to, uh, you got to be present. You got to get out there. You got to do something that's maybe not what you normally would do at a, at a school. <laughs> yeah, and I would suggest that anybody interested in getting their community on board around farm to school, first do a self-assessment. I think child nutrition professionals are not great at marketing ourselves, and I think that most schools already buy a bunch of stuff that is either grown, produced, or processed locally, and I don't think we give ourselves enough credit for that. So I think the best way to get people involved is to show what you're already doing. Depending on where you are in the country, it could be meat, it could be dairy, it could be produce, it could be a lot of different things that are already coming through your building that you are buying locally, and sometimes just showing that you're already buying 4 or 5 or 6 percent of your product locally and you want to boost that number up to 10 or 12 may generate the excitement that you need to get community members or businesses involved. Uh, great suggestions. Thank you so much. Well, everyone, that's going to about wrap us up for today. I do want to remind everybody about our upcoming webinar on evaluating your farm to school program on May 12th at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So um, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll talk to you in a couple weeks. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.